What's up everybody? Dan here with Dan and Sarah Makers and today we are getting into a uh, bit of a skills video. Today I'm going to show you how to do form work for a concrete wall. This could be anything from a short two foot stem wall all the way up to, you know, depending on how you design it, build it, and pour it, or place it. Um, 16, 24 foot tall wall, something of that nature. So this is a pretty versatile system. It's a John system, J-A-H-N. Um, there are different types of brackets that go into it. It's not your standard hairpin or wedge type of system, but it's extremely versatile. Um, it uses less lumber in the actual system itself, and it's just easy, clean type of formwork system. So I'm gonna demonstrate on basically a four foot high stem wall. We're gonna have some inside, outside corners and end of wall. So we're gonna go through all the steps from the lumber, processing our sheet goods and prepping them for the tie system to installing our ties, our lumber, strong backs, whalers, all that good stuff with some turnbuckles or form liners, depending on what you call them. So first thing first, we've got our sheet goods, our plywood. We're using three quarter inch plywood and we are going to gang drill them, which means we're basically just gonna stack up a bunch of sheets on top of each other and drill them in a grid for our tie spacing. I like to use a 16 inch square tie spacing. It's pretty universal. We come at eight inches in from each side of the plywood. That way when we have two sheets together, we have our 16 inch spacing through the sheet and through the joints. So we'll get that going and uh, then we'll go from there. So on our sheet goods, we're gonna do a 16 inch center. Like I said, we're gonna stack all of our sheets so they're nice and square on top of each other. I like to use a set of clamps. These are just um, vice grip clamps. You can also use a nail if you're only doing a few sheets, at least a couple nails to hold them from shifting. If you're doing a big stack, you might get away with just having them stacked and nailing the couple top sheets together so they don't slide. But the bigger the stack or the thicker the stack, the harder it is to keep that drill bit nice and straight and not start wandering, which will mess up your tie spacing because we're gonna be using these forms on both sides of the wall. So things need to line up nice and square or else your ties, which are these things, will start bending and having to flex to get there. And that can be a real fight sometimes. Um, you can use a string line, you can use a tape measure, chalk line. Um, I like using kind of a combination of chalk line and T-square to mark them out real quick. And um, basically, we use a drill bit that's just big enough to get our tie, snap tie head, button head through the form. So usually like a 5 8 9 16 that's about what you want. If you want to be really sloppy, go a little bit bigger, and then you have more room to fit that button head through the forms, especially if you're reaching in between trying to set your second side of your forms. It can be a little challenging. So um, I think I will go with the 5 8 because that's just big enough. I'm going to reuse this material for shelves later on, so I don't want a lot of... Uh, oversized holes in it, not that it really makes a difference, but that's just my opinion. Cordless drill, our ties, and some clamps. And like I said, eight inches in from each edge and 16 inches on center from there on out.
All right, so one little hint. When you're breaking banding on lumber, um, they have those like green plastic, it's almost like a solid plastic band. Those you can take the jaw of your hammer, same thing with the metal one, and stick it in between the banding and just twist. And that'll typically break the banding. These are kind of that woven um, or reinforced polyester type straps. Utility knife can work also. Or if I can get it out of the pouch, a pair of tin steps. So those are typical ways of breaking banding. I know some people, they just prefer to take the claw of the hammer and just bash on it and chop it that way. But, um, you know, with hammers costing as much as they do nowadays, there might be a better way. So for our sample wall here, like I said, we're doing end of wall, inside corner, outside corner, and then just a straight running wall. Um, I'll basically do an eight foot by four foot L shape. That will give us our three kind of features we want to look at, plus the straight wall. Um, I'll cut one of these panels up into four foot lengths, and then we'll cut some filler strips for both the outside corner of our end walls. And in the words of uh, AVE, I grabbed some safety squints. So we're good now. So I've got some old rusty, nasty snap ties that are left over. These have a uh, disc washers on the other end or on the inside that the forms will push up against. They also have plastic cones. I like the plastic cones a little bit better because they break inside the wall and so you can patch them back. These break at the wall so you get a little bit, bit of rust uh, staining typically. So the plastic cones are good for above wall visible locations. These plate washers, that's okay for like a below grade basement wall, something like that. These are eight inch ties. So my filler strips for both the outside corner and the end walls need to be eight inches wide. Penny just found her uh, water dish outside with ice in it, so she just broke some ice out. Now she's eating that. <laughs> So just for convenience, I'm actually going to start our inside corner first. Um, it's a little bit easier to do that because filling out our filler on the outside corner, which is one of those 8-inch wide strips that I cut, that'll be easier to install after on the inside has been done. That way it kind of holds itself together. So this is actually subflooring plywood that I got. It's a little bit less expensive. It's not the MDO or HDO plywood which would typically be used for form work. Um, it is a TNG or tongue and groove plywood. I'm going to put the groove down, tongue up, so it won't be a square corner like typical. I guess, you know, if you were doing forms where you wanted the joints to interlock a little bit for a little bit of strength, that might be okay. Um, but this plywood isn't going to hold up as well as a high density overlay or medium density overlay form work plywood. The uh, plies will delaminate and you'll get a lot of wood grain texture in your concrete. If that's the look you're going for, great. If it's not, you might want some type of a coated panel with a resin coating. So we'll start with our inside corners. Typically, this type of system would go down on a stem wall footing or some type of footing. So we'd actually drill down and secure a two by four along our snap line on the ground so we actually know where our wall needs to be. In this case, it's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm just going to nail the two corners together and then we'll start building up. And once I get a little bit of it put together, it'll start to strengthen the system and allow it to uh, hold itself together. So we'll, we'll have a two by four on the ground as our imaginary starting point. And there's a puppy helping out. All right, drooling over. Did you lick that or what?
Get back. <laughs> Likes hammers, I guess. Go. Go play over there. <laughs> this isn't going to work. All right. Come on, let's go inside. I've got a bunch of these old nasty ties. We'll put these in for now. Basically, you just go through and you stock your wall from one side. So now we'll move around to the back side so we can see what we need to do next. <laughs> 